Evening, everybody, and welcome to Admissions Live. Uh, my name is Ashley Hennigan. I oh no, wait, that's that's not on the script. Uh, my name is Chris Dorso, sitting in for Ashley today, uh, and uh, this is Admissions Live, the uh, weekly web show for college admissions professionals. Admissions Live, part of the Higher Ed Live Network, where we are dedicated to digital development and professional empowerment. Um, I am Chris Dorso, Assistant Director of Admissions here at Stony Brook University down on Long Island. I'm thrilled to be sitting in for Ashley today, who is producing on the other side of the glass, as they say in the radio world. Uh, we have Sarah Graham from Princeton Day School uh, as our guest on tonight's show. Uh, we are talking about Operation Apps, taking college by storm. Uh, if uh, you are a reader of the news uh, or of the internets. Uh, you know we had a, a big storm come through our way uh, a little over a month ago, and uh, it's a college uh, college bound seniors. And so uh, there's a lot we can do uh, as higher education professionals to help uh, get uh, high school seniors uh, through the application process in an efficient manner. And that's what uh, NACAC, in conjunction with New York State ACAC, as well as New Jersey ACAC, uh, are really reaching out to do with a great program that is uh, coming up this weekend that we're going to tell you all about. So, um, but first, uh, we got to uh, take care of all of our sponsors who uh, make this Admissions Live show possible. Uh, Admissions Live is sponsored by Welcome to College, uh, who believe it's all in the visit. So um, I would like to, uh, with that, introduce our uh, guest uh, with us today is Sarah Graham. Sarah is the Director of College Counseling at the Princeton Day School. Um, we were also hoping to have uh, a colleague of hers, of ours, Andre Richburg. Andre is the Director of Transfer and Graduate Enrollment at Centenary College in New Jersey. Sarah and Andre are co-chairs of the Inclusion, Access, and Success Committees, uh, Committee, rather, of the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling. Uh, and um, so with that, I'd like to welcome Sarah to the show. Thanks so much, Chris. It's good to be here. Excellent. So uh, Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, and um, your background, uh, where you are now and where you've been. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, I started my career in admissions, actually, in the Princeton Admission Office. So that's what that was my first exposure to the field, and I absolutely loved it. Um, but one of my favorite parts of the job was traveling around the country, getting to meet with students, and getting a bird's eye view of how different parts of the country view college admissions. So um, because I love those those conversations with students so much, that ultimately. Um, 
led me to to come to this side of the desk where now I, I work in college counseling um, and I love Princeton Day School it's been a, a great great experience for me um, and one of the most rewarding parts of my career is that not only do I get to work with students here at school and as I mentioned I, I just love my school um, but they also really support me in my work with the NJCAC and um, the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling has really allowed me to do a lot of outreach work it's a great group of people who um, throughout the year we run events um, specifically for underserved populations in New Jersey but really for all students and and we're really all about supporting students in the college admissions process as well as supporting our, our school counseling colleagues and admissions professionals good fantastic um, so um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Hurricane Sandy as everybody knows uh, the superstorm that uh, came up the uh, East Coast, uh, washed out uh, huge swaths of uh, New Jersey and, and New York City and the South Shore of Long Island here, uh, really directly affected uh, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and uh, there are obviously uh, some impact to that. So what impact have you seen where you are with your students, uh, with the population that you work with? Well, so here at, at PDS, we were closed for over a week with the storm. Um, but I don't know of a district in New Jersey that wasn't affected. Um, we had um, power outages, everything you've been seeing in the news. And I know areas of Long Island, Staten Island felt the same destruction. Um, the most heartbreaking thing for me has been seeing pictures of the shore. You know, I grew up going to the Jersey Shore. Um, my parents' shore house was actually destroyed in the storm. Um, but I, I know a lot of people from graduate school actually who now work out in districts by the shore and the horrific stories we heard from them about their um, high schools being used as shelters during the storm and just the the stories that their students were sharing that's really what led to operation apps which I know we'll talk about but it was it was a desire on the on the part of the NJACAC to do something to help realizing that you know the college admissions process and how it may have affected students is just one tiny piece to this puzzle of, of our state rebuilding and, and um, those areas that were affected in New York rebuilding um, but it was one thing that we felt that we could help with so that's what what ultimately led to our getting involved but it's I mean, as you've seen from pictures in the in the news, it's it's a mess here, and it's going to take a while to recover. We realize that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, I don't want to jump too far ahead on our sort of okay. our, our plan, um, although I'm really tempted to because Operation. I'm excited about what Operation Apps is going to be this weekend. Um, so, as a, a college counselor, are you seeing a shift in uh, in the the are students looking at schools differently, whether it be that they're saying, you know what, uh, I was looking at uh, schools in New York City or, uh, you know, along the shore somewhere, and now I want to stay closer to home, or vice versa. Are you seeing that kind of an impact at all? Um, you know, we, we are. So with, with my students, um, for the most part around here, you know, we've gotten power back, and for a little while, students started to think a bit about, um, maybe staying some staying closer to home and you know during the storm they were thrown off track a little bit and some of them were not able to submit applications because um, because power was out for so long um, but because colleges were so understanding with extending deadlines and really bending over backwards to support students who were affected by Sandy I found with with my students here um, here in Princeton and the surrounding areas for the most part they're moving ahead with their application plans but Having talked to colleagues at the shore and in the shore communities, I'm hearing just the, the absolute opposite, that they're saying that students who had planned to go out of state are now saying that um, they're going to stay closer to home for a few years. Um, families that had saved and now seen um, their livelihood washed away. That's where I've seen students say, we've really needed to regroup and, and um, alter our college plans dramatically. Um, I know there are a lot of families who are still picking up the pieces. Um, so that's, that's what I've been hearing from my colleagues throughout the state. Um, and I do, through, through the NJACAC, keep in touch with a lot of, of friends, especially out by the shore, and, and that's where we've been hearing that. I know one of the big stories that uh, that came out of uh, after one of these stories, maybe not big as I suppose all relative, but one of the stories that came out uh, was about how a lot of the schools that had November 1st deadlines did push those deadlines back to November 15th or November 9th or, or whatever it was in some cases. So we're past that at this point uh, as far as 
you know, getting all of that through. Um, so are you still seeing some play there? Are students, students are sort of on top of things now, they're catching up and... I, I think for the most part, for those students who are able to get online and who have internet at home, yes, they're, they're for the most part getting back on track. So I think for students who, for whom it was just a matter of um, submitting applications and regrouping, as I said, during the storm, and I, you know, during the storm when when we no one really had power, there was this little enclave, uh, a coffee shop in Princeton called Small World, where um, a whole group of people, some of my students included, were hanging out. So through like text message and um, the ways that we were able to communicate, I met up with some students there, and you know, we were having some of those counseling sessions during the time that we were closed, during the time that school was closed, and during that time, there was tremendous worry on the. Part part of students would we would they be able to apply and how would that affect their college process and um, and and that sort of thing so during that time there was a lot of worry I think for now those areas that have gotten power back are starting to recover and the fact that colleges have been so understanding and were so understanding was just tremendous um, but I do know that there are a lot of people especially for those towns that saw massive flooding um, the shore communities um, places like Moonaki up in North Jersey they're, they're going to take a while, and, and having talked to my colleagues in those areas, um, you know, it's not just a matter of extended deadlines in those, in those areas. Um, students are really having um, to re-examine where they're looking at schools and re-examining their, their plans. Um, so that's, that's again, what, what we're hearing. So it's not a one-size-fits-all for how students' application plans may have been affected by Sandy. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Operation Apps. So where did Operation Apps come from, uh, and uh, what exactly is it? So during Operation, so during the during the storm, um, we started talking. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that I'm part of the new uh, NJACAC is that it's just such a tremendous, amazing group of people. And um, during the storm, we started checking in with each other and making sure that we were okay, that our families were okay. Um, and thankfully, for the most part, our executive members were okay. You know, people lost property, but but our lives and families were okay. Um, but as we started to talk to our account counseling colleagues throughout the state, we started to hear just the horrible stories from their students and counselors who were saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to work, but I, I have to deal with all this stuff when I go home, too, from right. flooding at my house and my parents' house. So um, we started to hear some of those stories and think, um, how, can, how can we give back um, and how can we make a difference? And, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, how students are affected in the counseling process, or the college college process, rather, is just one tiny piece to the rebuilding effort. But it was one place that we felt like we actually did have the expertise that we could possibly make a difference. Um, you know, we can't, unfortunately, rebuild houses and do do that. But we felt if we could, in any way, support our counseling colleagues at the shore, as well as those students at the shore who have been displaced and whose college processes may have been thrown off by, by the storm, we wanted to try to do that. So, um, so we, we had this idea that we started throwing around, what if we um, had a Saturday where um, we made ourselves available and told students that they could come to get advice. Um, and around the same time, uh, a gentleman, Don Frazier at NACAC, which is the National um, Association for College Admissions Counseling, sort of the, the national partner of the NJACAC um, and the New York State ACAC, um, got in touch with our, our organization's president and basically had the same idea, like is there some way that we can all bond together to help students. So from there, Operation App took shape. Um, and um, uh, shall I talk a little bit about what the, the days are going to involve? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Um, we've got, uh, there's a, uh, if you go, there's a, a number of links that are out there. Uh, the uh, There's a Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com slash Operation Apps by Storm. Uh, there is a, a, a a lot of the details there, but let's talk about, uh, there's, there are five locations this weekend. Uh, you'll be at the Berkeley College location in Paramus yep. Uh, yep. on Saturday. In addition, there will be one at Brookdale Community College in Hazlitt, uh, at Richard Stockton College in Galloway, uh, at Adelphi here on Long Island, uh, and then on Sunday at Wagner College in Staten Island. Uh, and uh, so what exact, what's going to happen for, uh, I guess the, the question, and I guess our, our target market for this show here is, is really higher ed folks and, and counselors and whatnot. So if you're looking for volunteers for this weekend, uh, if you're a, 
uh, whether you're a, a college admission person who wants to help or you're a guidance person who says I want to bring my students down uh, or I want to recommend to parents what's the expectation what's going to happen on Saturday Exactly. So on Saturday, if you've ever been to a national fair, um, national college fair like NACAC runs, um, there's a counseling center that's part of it. And we really modeled Operation App on Saturday after those counseling centers. So how it's going to work at, at those sites that you mentioned, um, students can arrive anytime from 10 to 4, and there will basically basically be three different components to each center. Um, there'll be one-on-one -on -one help available, so we'll have school counseling colleagues and admissions professionals available to offer one-on-one -on -one support to every student and family who comes. And that can be on anything from getting advice on a college essay to um, maybe honing a college list to um, any other admissions topic that you may want to run by someone. So we will have those counseling centers available within um, each application help center. In addition, we'll have computer labs available. So if students have had trouble with their internet at home or need a quiet place to work, um, we'll have those, those um, computer sites available for students to use with free wireless internet. So you can come get your work done there with admissions professionals on staff to help you get that application work done. Um, and then we'll also have financial aid experts available. We've had a lot of students saying that uh, a lot of their questions and their families' questions obviously circulate around financial aid especially for those families that have taken a big hit from the storm. So um, those three components, that one-on-one -on -one help, um, financial aid experts available, and those computer labs um, are what you'll find at each application help center. Um, now each center is being run by um, different site coordinators, so um, it truly has been a team effort. You mentioned that I'll be at Berkeley, and that's been the site that I've been presiding over, but we have a great team um, that's really been assembled to, to help, as well as a great crew of volunteers. So there's still room to volunteer. So one of the ways I know you'll be sharing um, our our Facebook page as well as um, njacac.org, which is again the New Jersey affiliate 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 excuse me of NACAC. Um, but we have all the information up on our homepage, both a link to volunteer, um, and um, we also ask students to pre-register. So um, walk-ins are absolutely welcome, but it would be great for students to to pre-register so that we can make sure we have the proper numbers of volunteers in place. Um, so if you're a college rep listening to this and you know um, school counselors in your area that are working with students who were affected by Hurricane Sandy, I would love you to help us spread the word. That's been our biggest thing. Is We've had a lot of news outlets pick up this story. We've had a lot of social social media sites. But our student numbers of those who anyway who have pre-registered are still a bit low. Um, and we don't know what that means. That could just mean that students aren't pre-registering um, and, and, and are going to walk in. And certainly we'll be ready for those walk-ins. Um, but if you can help get get the word out to students and let them know that um, there's a pre-registration link on njacac.org as well as the Facebook page. Um, that would be the best way to help. Um, and then again, if you're interested in volunteering, please do register as a volunteer because even if we can't use you ultimately this weekend, there are a lot of these outreach initiatives that we do that we would love to have your help on. Um, because in addition to this outreach this weekend, there's kind of two reasons that we really wanted to do something like Operation App. There's the need that we see to help now, and we hope that students and families will come this weekend and get the help that they may need. Um, but there's also the awareness that we want to to raise about events like this that the NJACAC and New York State ACAC run. Um, and all of that information can be found on our websites as well. Two of the big programs are College Key and Camp College. Um, but we also offer programs throughout the year. And, and we hope if, if you're a counselor listening to this um, and you would like us to come do an on-site program for your students, know that there are admissions professionals that are available. We love to do stuff like this. And we love to come help students. And all of the stuff that we do is completely free. Um, and it's all volunteer-based. But um, we want, again, there to be that awareness that in addition to the events this Saturday, we really want to, to have more grassroots things spring up um, from these events. I think um, one of the things that I think is, is really important that you sort of brought up is the importance of what uh, we do as a counseling profession. It's very, very easy on the on the admission side of the table to uh, to get very caught up in the sales piece. And yes, this is 
you know, we're out there and we're representing our schools and I've got the little Stony Brook logo on my screen over here, you know. But, you know, what we do as, as professional organizations through the ACACs and, and through uh, our professional groups is, is about, you know, helping students get through the process and helping match students with uh, the right experience for them. Uh, and so I think it's, it's really important to be involved in your professional organizations, uh, you know, on do committee work and, and to really be invested in it uh, because you really get a chance to make a difference for folks uh, in a really practical way that goes above and beyond just getting through a stack of physical applications sometimes or if you're on the counseling school counseling side writing through those stack of recommendation requests. <laughs> You're totally right, and and being part of of these organizations and being part of things like Operation App and and Camp College, um, it reminds you that you're part of something bigger than yourself. It, and it, it truly does happen that way. That you realize there are just really good people in the world who care about students. Um, I mean, I don't I don't need to tell you how much the admissions process is all over the news as this faceless thing that it's getting more competitive than ever before. And who are these admissions people? And who do they think they are? But one of the great things is that. I hope that NJACAC, New York State ACAC, and the events that we run and, and the people that are part of these organizations show that that they're at, really, at the end of the day, everyone cares about the kids and, and helping them find that fit, as you pointed out. Um, so as, we've, uh, as we're going through the show tonight, um, we are not just live here, but we're also monitoring uh, back channel things on Twitter, and so you've got uh, the hashtag, uh, hash admissions live. Uh, and Don Frazier, who you mentioned, um, I, I did mention uh, a little while ago that uh, he spoke with somebody from Newsday, a uh, big paper here on Long Island, and so uh, hopefully we'll get a little press from Newsday tomorrow, which would be fantastic. Uh, but there's lots of ways to, uh, to, to reach out and to promote it, um, you know, through your various social media channels, um, through, uh, you know, reaching out across your office. Uh, maybe not everybody in your office is on Twitter or Facebook, uh, you know, shoot out an email to everybody and say, hey, uh, you know, this is what's happening this weekend. Anybody who's available, you want to go to the mall on Saturday or do you want to actually help people? Um, <laughs> you're probably doing a lot better thing uh, helping people than uh, standing online somewhere at Target. <laughs> Is Target well, a sponsor? And, Target's not a sponsor, are they? <laughs> no, no. Well, and I'd also, I'd also add that even if you can't help this weekend, um, or it may be that the, the sites that you want to volunteer at already have their volunteers set, please know how much we appreciate your helping to get the word out about this event. And then the other thing, um, we would love ideas. I mentioned um, NJACAC, for example, as well as New York ACAC run a program called Camp College, um, which is a summer program to help um, traditionally underserved students in our states um, gain access to information about the college admissions process. So there are a lot of these sorts of events that we run, but we welcome um, ideas that, that you may have for places that we could be running programs for um, people we could partner with, um, community organizations that we could help. Um, as I mentioned, and one of the, the greatest things that touched me most in working on Operation Apps over the last several weeks has been this outpouring of support and people who want to help and want us to and want it to be involved. Um, so I would love to kind of keep that momentum going and in addition to the events this weekend to continue having events like this to help people who truly need it, um, whether it was because they were affected by Hurricane Sandy or because they've been touched by other life circumstances. But really, at the end of the day, we're all in this career and in this field because we want to help kids and we want to help them get accurate information to help them achieve their college goals. So if you have ideas of how we could do that and places we could be doing that, um, we'd love to hear that too. And, and you can feel free to email. Um, I know you'll throw up the uh, Operation Apps um, Gmail account, but we also have a, a campaign Camp College um, Gmail uh, address that I know that they'll share, and we'd love to hear from from people. Yeah, we'll hit uh, we'll hit their uh, the Camp College as well as the Operation Apps New Jersey uh, email addresses. Um, we'll get those up uh, out on Twitter for uh, questions on the New Jersey sites. It's Operation App NJ at Gmail dot com uh, for the Staten Island Wagner College is Sandy Staten Island at New York State ACAC, uh, NYSACAC.org. And for the Adelphi program, it's Sandy Long Island 
at nysacac.org, uh, and then the Camp College NJ is campcollegenj at gmail.com. Yep. Um, I want to throw back to something that uh, you uh, mentioned earlier, and I think the the probably one of the biggest concerns coming out of everything that Sandy was is going to be the financial one for families. Um, you know, the affordability is is has been king in our world for the last you know eighteen months, uh, and now that all of a sudden there are a lot of other expenses that families have. Uh, all of a sudden, that affordability is becoming going to become even more paramount. So, uh, how have you seen? Or I guess, what is? How have you seen it impact your work, uh, just purely from a financial perspective? Uh, and what uh, recommendations do you have for school counselors, for college admissions folks who are confronted with questions of families who uh, now have affordability concerns? Absolutely. Um, I mean, the biggest piece of advice is know that there are people who care who want to help you answer your questions. Um, and certainly, your school counselors are a great place to start to help you um, figure out where to go to get those questions answered. We realize that families may have been saving for college, and now we're hit with this financial um, uncertainty in the wake of Sandy, depending on property that they may have lost or um, you know, family members that may have needed to get taken in now. So. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty, I realize, on a part of a lot of families. I heard from some uh, counselors out by the shore that some students who were originally thinking that they wanted to go away are now wanting to stay closer to home um, because of, of the, the damage that their family has seen to family property and things like that. So um, I know there's a lot like that, and, and students saying that they need to work now um, in addition to balancing college. So. Obviously, all those answers aren't going to get addressed in a day in something like Operation Apps, but a couple thoughts on that. To talk through it with an expert um, is a great way to start. Um, if you can't make it to the program on Saturday, or even if you can, another way um, that you might get that help is reaching out to the financial aid offices at each school that you're considering. So colleges are wonderful and full of really warm people who want to help. So um, in addition to calling the admissions office at a school where you have questions, there's a financial aid office with people who are there to answer those questions. So um, I think to just to, to know that there are people on the other end of the phone who want to talk through some of these things and if they can't answer the question often they know someone who can so at least not to sit on your questions and to ask them and and know that there are people who care about helping you get the answers I think is a, is a good message to, to get out there yeah I think that's a, a really relevant point um, SUNY uh, the State University of New York system each uh, winter does a, a financial aid day it's typically early February and I should probably know the date because we're involved, but I don't. It's uh, typically the first or second Sunday in February, right? Uh, Saturday in February, uh, where uh, SUNY schools are open. And much like this Operation Apps program, if, if they're just for general financial aid kinds of questions, families who are filling out the FAFSA for the first time and you know just want some guidance in the process, uh, you know whatever the local, the closest school to you is, even if you're not applying there, right. you're still willing to be able to answer questions and to kind of get a sense of of what this monster that financial aid is is uh, because it, it is confusing for for families especially those who have never done it uh, and again going back to the affordability thing all you see is the crazy sticker prices and things like that and it's yeah important for folks to be aware I you're absolutely right I mean that's it's uh, I Absolutely agree. And I think um, one of the programs, I don't know if you're referring to the, the same one, but there's a program called College Goal Sunday, um, which may be the program you're referring to, but for families who want information about financial aid, that is a great program um, in addition to you know calling the financial aid offices of the schools you're interested in. That may be linked in with that, and I'm going to plead ignorance and I don't know. So, Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> the same exact thing. Go with that. Um, so, uh, I, one question that I'm uh, seeing on the back channel here. So, as a as a uh, a high school person, uh, as a guidance person, um, what is it that is there any or is there anything that you would, would want to see colleges doing, maybe more proactively, um, for students uh, who are affected by by a storm and, and that its aftermath. Well, I think one of the things, um, one of the biggest things, is something that they've already done is just even acknowledging that 
families are in all different states of, of healing and in, of recovery. Um, so I've seen on a lot of websites a, a notice to students that we've extended our deadline and, and you know that was back in November that we extended de our deadline for anyone who's affected by Sandy. But a lot of schools also put in that in addition, if you're if you've been affected and will not be able to get your application in by by this deadline, we want to know. So just a way again to put a human face on the college admissions process to let students know that we're here to listen. I think you know even if students end up not taking advantage of that, knowing that that there are people out there who care and that are willing to to listen and and extend extend deadlines if that's needed um, is a great way to start. So that's one thing. I think that acknowledgement on their website. Um, so formally that, that this is something. Um, I, I'll go back to during the storm when a lot of my students were really nervous that, oh my gosh, like early decision is, is um, coming up and um, I don't have power, I don't have internet, does that mean I'm not going to be able to apply? And you know there were some priority dates that it wasn't just early decision but a priority date that they were going to miss um, for a scholarship deadline. So when schools actually, and we knew that colleges were probably going to extend their deadlines, but students who are going through this for the first time, you know, it's hard to, to convince them that. So when colleges formally united um, and really put on their websites that were extending deadlines, that made a huge impact on students and their their um, uh, level of, of um, comfort. So I think that formal acknowledgement that you're willing to work with students is a great thing to do. Um, and even just to acknowledge on the road, I think that extends beyond just the storm to stu to colleges getting out there on the road and, and letting students know how much they care, even if they can't admit everyone who applies, knowing that um, they're willing to listen to the story um, and that student's story is, is, again, a great thing. Very, very, very true. Um, I had a, uh, oh, I remember what I was going to, my, uh, my thought. I remember after the storm had hit, I had seen a, a story a couple days into November uh, from, I can't remember where I had seen it, uh, that said, yes, deadlines have been extended, but don't feel the need to take advantage of that. Uh, you know, just because you can, if you're from Nebraska and you have right. not been affected by Sandy, uh, get your applications in, move, move, you know, get get the process going. Don't don't let the uh, the delay necessarily affect you if you don't have to have it affect you. So, um, yeah. All right, so um, so uh, let's uh, just do a little recap about uh, about this weekend. Again, you've got uh, five programs, three in New Jersey on Saturday. Uh, one uh, at Adelphi here on Saturday, and then one at Wagner College on Sunday. Uh, the full details on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Operation Apps by Storm. Uh, plenty of opportunities to volunteer uh, here and in the future. Uh, always looking for, um, for other ways to help. Uh, very important to, uh, to reach out to your, uh, your professional organizations uh, through ACAs, your ACACs, or uh, a member of SUNYCAP. Uh, there's lots of ways to uh, to participate beyond your office borders, uh, and we want to make sure that you really take the opportunity to uh, to do that professionally. It it benefits everybody. It benefits you. It benefits uh, your colleagues. It benefits your uh, campus. It benefits your applicant pool. It benefits literally everyone. Uh, the more involved you are, and the more uh, visible you are in the process. So please do uh, try to take advantage of that. Um, Sarah, any parting thoughts before we do any wrap-up kinds of things? Well, I think you said it perfectly. Just the importance of being involved in your professional organizations like um, the NJACAC and the New York State ACAC. I think you're absolutely right. It, it's a community of caring, and it helps really reinforce that point that um, we're all in it together to support our students and help them find the best college matches that are out there for them. Very good. All right, so with that, um, we will get ready to wrap up here. Uh, I'm going to put in um, a quick personal plug. There are a number of us uh, on the social media back channels um, uh, who are uh, involved in a higher ed music project where we put, uh, we're compiling a list of the top records of 2012 because we're all old and we all still think of records. Um, so uh, hashtag higher ed music uh, to all of uh, the 12 or 15 of us that are involved there. Uh, and so uh, forthcoming uh, on Higher Ed Live, uh, we have got our Higher Ed Live Christmas extravaganza uh, featuring Ashley and Ed uh, and musical guest Michael Buble. So I'm very... Oh, no, no, I'm told that is not happening now. 
So I apologize, uh, Michael Bublé canceled. Ah, it always happens last minute. So once again, um, a shout out to uh, our sponsors, to uh, Welcome to College, to Zinch, to Integral, to Scavenger. Uh, very much thanks to Ashley and the rest of the Higher Ed Live team. Uh, special thanks to Sarah for helping us put this together. Uh, we um, were uh, putting together the plans for holiday break, and then we will uh, have a, a great another series of shows uh, coming for you in January. So stay tuned uh, here to Higher Ed Live and to Admissions Live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, so tonight for Ashley Hennigan, I am Chris Dorso. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, and we will see you all next time on Admissions Live.